When you hear about turntables, you hear about two kinds a whole lot. One of them is uh, the suitcase style, uh, ones you can just buy, put a record on, and start playing immediately. But the suitcase one right here, it does not sound good. The other type is the high-end type of turntable where you have to buy your own cartridge and your own uh, pre-amplifier and your own amplifier and your own speakers. Uh, those separates often sound really good, but they are kind of a hassle to deal with. There's something in the middle, and I found one like that. It is called the RetroLife UD006. You can buy it. It has everything you need already, and it sounds good. And I'm going to be checking it out. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. Quick disclaimer before I get started, the folks at Retro Life sent over the UD006 as a review sample. I consider review samples to be on loan, so if they want this back, they can ask for it. I am not being paid for this review, and all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Now the UD006. It has a lot of features that you don't find on the little cheap suitcase ones. It has a heavy metal platter uh, that keeps the spinning real stable, not much wow and flutter on it. It has a uh, moving magnet cartridge that comes with it, and you could change it out if you wanted to and replace the cartridge. It has uh, an adjustable tracking force. It has an aluminum tone arm. Uh, and it has some modern features like a USB output so you can record to a computer uh, as well as Bluetooth input and output. Now I already took this thing out of the box. Let's back up and check out the unboxing. This box shows a picture of a turntable. This is the shipping box. So I think that the shipping box and the containing box are one and the same. This was damaged in transit but I'm hoping that this is just superficial damage. Uh, one thing of note is that this Retro Live turntable doesn't say Retro Life on the box. It says U Dreamer. So I'm wondering if this is sold under multiple brand names. Let's get into this box. There is some foam protection on the top here. All right, this is gonna go on the top of the turntable. Here is a wall wart and instructions. And there is the turntable itself. Oh wow, that is heavy. Heavier than I was expecting for a budget turntable. That is a, a very solid platter right there. There's an RCA cable, speaker wire, and a USB cable in here. And in the bottom of the box are some bookshelf size speakers here. Tucked inside the foam is the tone arm mass adjustment and an Allen wrench. And clearly some assembly will be required on this. Shouldn't be too tough, however. It did come with a moving magnet phono cartridge here with a protective cover. Hopefully the belt for the belt drive is in here with the speaker wire. And the USB and there it is there's the belt for the belt drive so it's going to go around here all right the belt drive is now hooked up we'll go ahead and put the platter on The counterweight should be fairly easy to install here, and it was. Now, if you want to lock down this counterweight, there is a place to screw it down tight with the Allen wrench here. All right, let's get this lid on. And that opens and closes quite smoothly. Very nice. 
Okay, looking at the back of the unit, here is the audio output that is switchable between line level and phono level. If you're plugging it into uh, most devices, you will want the line level. If you're plugging it into a phono preamp, switch to the phono level. Here's USB, that's for when you're plugging it into a computer. Next to that is speed, and you can select between 33 and a third and 45 there is no 78 selection next to that is auto stop that means that when the tone arm gets to the center of the record it will stop the platter from spinning i'm going to try try that out that feature out so i'm going to leave that on next to that is pitch that will let you speed up or slow down uh, the motor uh, and adjust the pitch of the motor I'm going to try it uh, centered up and make sure that uh, the speed is accurate when it's centered up. Next to that is the DC barrel jack connection and it is a 9 volt 2 amps. And finally over here are the speaker outputs for speaker level. Before I play a record I need to get the tone arm set. So I'm going to pull this out until it's evenly balanced. And then I'm going to say that that's zero by basically putting zero on top. Now this, uh, this stylus is recommended with a three gram tracking force. I'm going to turn it till it says three. I want to go ahead and verify that that's three grams. And it says 3.21 grams, 3.24 grams. That is pretty close. I'm going to back off just a little bit. Okay, 2.87 grams. I'm a little bit under, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to do some play tests, but you at home, you're not going to hear it right because what you're going to be hearing is this turntable played through those speakers and then picked up on my lavalier microphone that's on my shirt over here, which is not going to be the greatest fidelity. I will do some sound samples later using the USB output on here. And uh, at that time, you'll have a better idea of, uh, of the, at least the preamp stage on this device. I want to avoid a copyright strike and I don't think all time greatest bloopers is going to cause me a problem. I want to go ahead and wipe it off with a brush here. So I need to get it spinning. This record does An have crackles. After a hard and long day at the studio, admitted he had other things on his mind when it came time for doing this commercial for a beauty salon. Ladies, when it's time for a trip to the beauty parlor, remember it's Helen's on 5th and Main Street. All right, so that played okay, but you can't really get an idea of the fidelity of this from old radio and television broadcasts. So I'm going to go ahead and gamble a little bit and play some music. Okay, here I have the 45 hooked on classics. Now for 45s, you will need something like this, an adapter. This did not come with an adapter. So uh, if you're going to play 45 records, you're going to need one of these. Now I'm going to have to change the speed back here to 45, and that is on the back on this device. I'll go ahead and hit this with the brush. And the tweeters and woofers on those speakers sound pretty good. The, the bass response is actually adequate. All right, I am near the end of the Hooked On Classics record here, and I want to see how the auto stop works. And the auto stop is stopping before the song ended. That might have something to do with the fact that I'm playing a 45 on here and not a 33 RPM LP. So I'm going to put a 33 RPM LP on here and see if this is still an issue. Okay, the record I'm putting on now is a band called Point Blank. Uh, this is somewhat obscure, mid-70s Texas rock. Point Blank 
definitely has some ZZ Top vibes going on. Okay, the auto stop is working correctly with this LP record. So don't use the auto stop feature if you're playing a 45. It might stop the song before the song's finished. With an LP record, it is not an issue. The next thing I want to check out is the RPM, and I'm using the app on my phone here, and it says 33.7. That's a little bit fast for an LP, but keep in mind there is that pitch adjustment back here. And by using the pitch adjustment, I managed to get it down to 33.3. .3. For the next test, I've hooked up the Retro Live turntable up to my laptop. And I've launched Audacity and I'm recording, uh, right now I'm recording the point blank record that I, uh, that I was playing earlier just for my own personal enjoyment. From this test record I will be playing band 3, 25 seconds of silence, but keep in mind this old test record crackles. Band 3. 25 seconds of silence. For this section, I'm not listening for the pops and crackles on the record. I'm listening for rumble that could be caused by the motor on the turntable and hiss that would be introduced during the preamp stage. I'm not hearing any rumble and the hiss level is pretty low. From the CBS test record, I'm going to do a right channel frequency sweep. Frequency response with this device is a little more tapered than what I've seen on other devices. The low frequencies are rather weak. It comes in loud and clear in the mid frequencies. And then it tapers off again at the high frequencies. But keep in mind that test records don't have as flat a frequency response on a sweep when compared to test CDs. I want to talk about playing this record through a Bluetooth speaker. So I grabbed a Bluetooth speaker here. I'm going to turn it on. And it should, that's the noise it makes when Bluetooth it's on. Note. And then I'm going to switch to Bluetooth out. Now I lose the audio through the speakers here. But I now have audio coming through this Bluetooth speaker. All right, that Bluetooth speaker, I moved it to the other room. It's rather loud, so you should still be able to hear it. Uh, but I want to demonstrate that the Bluetooth signal coming from this turntable is plenty strong to drive the Bluetooth device in the other room. Now I want to talk about using uh, the speakers here on this device to play Bluetooth from a phone or something. To do that, I'm going to switch to Bluetooth in. And now I'm going to pair this with my phone. The Retro Live shows up on my Bluetooth list as turntable. And it's now pairing up. I'm going to hit OK. That shut down the record player. The record player stopped playing now. All right, and I'm now playing the new Clutch song. I want it to be a little louder. So I went ahead and turned the speakers up some. And now the amplification section of the Retro Life is being used as Bluetooth speakers. I know some folks here are going to be interested in looking at the specs. I'm going to put those up on the screen, but I'm not going to linger on these or talk about each individual one. If you want to analyze this, I recommend you pause the video. Now the Retro Life U006 is available through both the Retro Life website and Amazon. I'm going to put both links in the description. The Amazon link will be an affiliate link. Thrifty AV earns a small commission at no additional charge to you. So the conclusion, let's talk about the good stuff first. It has everything you need in the box. I went from taking it out of the box to playing a record on it within about 15 minutes. Now I already know how to put together a record player and hook things up. Uh, it might take you a little longer if you're less familiar with it, 
but the book says how to do everything, so consult the book if you need help with that. It has important features like a moving magnet cartridge. Those cheap little suitcase uh, turntables have a ceramic cartridge. Those just don't sound as good. It also has a heavy platter that helps uh, keep the speed of the turntable even, and it has an aluminum tone arm. Uh, with the moving magnet cartridge and heavy platter, this device sounds good. And it has great connectivity. You can use the built-in amp and speakers, or you can hook it to as a line level source to your own amplifier. You can use it as a phono level source, a USB source, or you can play your records through a Bluetooth speaker. You can even use the RetroLife amp and speakers as a Bluetooth speaker to play uh, songs off your phone or something like that. And the bookshelf speakers are pretty small, but they sound pretty good. Uh, if you want, you can upgrade the phono cartridge with a different phono cartridge. And uh, different phono cartridges have different tracking forces. You can adjust that uh, on the retro life. Now my nitpicks, okay. This device is powered by a nine volt, two amp wall wart. It's not gonna have the same power as a 100 watt per channel receiver will. It just will not get that loud. And we're talking bookshelf size speakers too. This is not gonna blast you out. If you wanna play things loud, this might not be the device for you. Or if, or you could hook it up to a device that will play loud, uh, but you don't want to use the built-in amplific amplification section if you want to play really, really loud. It ran a little bit fast when, at the center indent on the speed. I had to slow the speed down a little, a little using the pitch control in order to get the proper speed with a uh, LP record. But I was able to get a proper speed after I did that. And uh, the auto stop stopped a little bit early when playing a 45 record. The auto stop worked fine when playing a regular LP record. Uh, so that's all the nitpicks. Overall, I am really pleased with this product. If the folks at Retro Life don't ask for it back, well, I'm gonna keep it in my den and I am gonna use it. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons and uh, members for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.